Welcome back, Canonites, for a special edition of Cannon Fodder on this, the eve of the release of the Halo Wars Definitive Edition. As has been noted before, not everyone will have instant access tomorrow, but that is when the early access tokens will start rolling out. If you pre-order the Halo Wars 2 Ultimate Edition after tomorrow, it may take up to 10 days for your copy of the Halo Wars Definitive Edition to unlock. Anyway, with that little bit of info out of the way, let's dive into Cannon Fodder itself, which this week takes a deeper look at certain characters and aspects of the original RTS hit. First up is a look at Ripa Morami, the Arbiter who is, in a number of ways, the antithesis of the common elite. He is little concerned with honor and tradition. As an example, he regularly draws his blades when Sunghili tradition dictates that a weapon, once drawn, cannot be put away until it has tasted blood. Ripa is, instead, focused on victory. Early in his career, Ripa led a strike force during the 16th Ungoid Disobedience that quelled the rebellion. His ruthlessness was cemented when he butchered the infamous pirate Lord Krith, during which his legion was reduced to a handful of hardened killers. And his mastery of war was honed over the course of dozens of campaigns on the fringes of Covenant space and at the cost of several worlds. However, Ripa grew too ambitious, and tried to overthrow his clan's Kaiden on the colony of Malurak, aka Decided Heart. He failed, and for his failure was condemned to a living death. Lucky for him, these actions and his zeal caught the attention of the Prophet of Regret, and Ripa would be given a second chance as the Arbiter. The next character we look at is the unnamed Brute Chieftain, now given the nickname of Thrall Slayer. This Chieftain was a powerful force during the Harvest Campaign. After the discovery of Shield World 0459 and the arrival of the human ship Spirit of Fire, the Thrall Slayer was ordered to accompany the Prophet of Regret when he was evacuated on the order of Ripa Morami. Though Ripa's intent had been to rob the Chieftain of any glory, this would ultimately ensure the Brute's survival after the Shield World was destroyed. It's pretty awesome to get confirmation that the Chieftain actually did survive the events of Halo Wars, and to get a nickname other than just Army Commander. But seriously, 343, we know he's Caster from Halo Last Light. Just admit it already. <laughs> Moving on, we next look at Proclamation's Tithe, the CPV destroyer that the Spirit of Fire had a close encounter with upon entering the inside of the Shield World. Both ships were heavily damaged in the fight, and the crew of the Destroyer, alive or dead, would be honored by the Prophet of Regret when he returned to High Charity. If you recall, CPV Destroyers were often crewed with those deemed unworthy or unfit to serve on other ships. Those condemned as disloyal or disobedient, but not heretics. Those that served on Proclamation's Tithe were lucky enough to have their names restored to the roles of honor in the Covenant Archives. Finally, we get a look at the Vampire, a standout Covenant aircraft for a couple of reasons. A generally odd, if not memorable, design, and a name that breaks from the typical ghost-slash-spirit nomenclature for Covenant vehicles. The Vampire, while not a common vehicle to encounter, was certainly recognizable to UNSC forces. Like most Covenant craft, its cockpit was located towards the rear in an environmentally sealed pod, while weaponry and armor was mainly towards the front. The primary weapon for vampires was a super heavy needle cannon, acting in a similar manner to the needler gun employed by Covenant troops. Some vampires, though not all, also had a stasis cannon and two heavy plasma turrets. Though rarely used, the vampire was also equipped with a space-capable impulse drive. And that wraps up the main body of the article. The next section has a rather exciting announcement. Available for the first time since the release of the original Halo Wars, legally speaking, this Cannon Fodder article has a downloadable PDF of Halo Wars Genesis, a Halo Wars prequel comic written by Eric Nyland and illustrated by Phil Noto. This comic was originally exclusive to those who bought the Halo Wars Collector's Edition, but is now available to everyone. I gotta give major props to 343 for doing this, as the story is a rather important piece of fiction, giving important backstory on the characters of Halo Wars. Check it out when you have the chance. The article then comes to a close with an unboxing slash building video of the Ground Command Pelican, an item I still gotta get. And that brings Cannon Fodder to a close. Nice slices of interesting information, both old and new, and the release of Halo Wars Genesis is again a damn smart move by 343. If you want to know more about the Halo Wars Definitive Edition and how to get it, check out this past week's community update for relevant information, including a look at the new achievement list. Spoiler alert, they got rid of the general rank achievement, thank god. Links to that and the Cannon Fodder article are in the description box below, as always. And before we go, also consider checking out my review of Halo Smoke and Shadow. It's only three weeks late. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. 
You are the reason I get to keep doing this. So thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.